Hope everybody's having a great Sunday. Welcome into McWhorter Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. It's the series finale between the Syracuse Orange and the Clemson Tigers. Beautiful day for softball today. And Green do up in the first inning. Lopez, Evans, Knight, Alves, Clyde, and Starr. Shannon Depking is the coach. And uh, Scott, we're speculating the Syracuse Orange are still standing. All of the non-starters are still standing down the third baseline. I'm not sure what this is for. Oh, they're having a standoff over here. One of the Tiger players is over here on the right side. I'm not sure what they're doing. This is That's the... Ansley Houston. She walks away, and now the Syracuse Orange walk away. So a little gamesmanship that's early, the, maybe. That's one of the oddest things I've, uh, <laughs> I've seen in a while. There's still a couple of Syracuse players standing out there. Well, having a good time. That's how it's going to be. They're ready to go out at both teams now laughing and pointing at each other and having a good time. So yeah. great stuff. Great stuff. In the circle for the Tigers, Brooke McCoven, the sophomore. Got some great numbers this year. Angel Hasso steps in for Syracuse and takes the first pitch right in there, strike one. A lot of people may be uh, shaking their head about Brooke McCubbin getting a start, but I'm not surprised at this. She's a highly uh, touted player out of uh, Cedar uh, Union Grove High School down in uh, Fayetteville, Georgia, and she's shot up there and got a slow roll to start the game. That was a nice play by Davenport. We saw how quick Hasso was yesterday. You don't have a lot of time. Can't afford a bobble in any way, shape, or form, and a quick first out for Brooke it's, McCubbin. She's from Locust Grove. Not Union Grove, down Andrew. in Georgia. Angie Ramos. Two years ago, she was a Georgia High School Player of the Year. McCubbin is an outstanding pitcher. It's just been hard for her to get innings. I mean, when you've got Cagle and Millie Thompson up there, it's just hard to find innings. Count even now, one and one. Did you do anything to get in trouble? Me? Yeah. I did not. Okay. I just. The boss is in the booth, and I just didn't know if you had done something. We do. Something. We have the boss man here, Mr. Yeah. Rick Bagby, with us, yeah. keeping an eye on us. He's sitting closer to me, so I'm. <clears throat> you're, you might be. You might be right that I'm the one potentially in timeout here and don't, and our, don't know it. Our benevolent leader. <laughs> <laughs> Ramos with a hitter's count, fouls it away, two and two. Sporting a really nice haircut today. Two and two to count. Just getting started. Another just Chamber of Commerce day in Clemson for softball. Absolutely beautiful. It was beautiful yesterday. Had a lot of violent weather come through the southeast on Friday. Uh, game one was rained out, so they ended up playing two yesterday. And you could have not had a prettier day to play a doubleheader than you did yesterday. Another 2-2 pitch. Get down the right field line. Long run over there for Jacobson. She makes an easy play. Out number two. Well, that ball was tailing away from her. She did a great job of running through the catch. You, we talked about the speed of the outfield at Clemson. But look right here. She just keeps running, 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 and there you are. What makes me mad is she tried it right back to her position. If I'd had to run that far, I'd have sit and rested a while. <laughs> Kelly Breen steps in for the orange. Takes strike one right on the outside corner. Would you have a chair out in the outfield? Would you be sitting? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> in between oh, yeah. pitches? Okay. I'd have a chair in the outfield. I'd, I'd get up when I needed to. I would think so. Breen hits one right back up the middle, just past the diving Maddie Moore, and that's the first hit of the game for Syracuse. Yep, but that was a good at bat and a nice firm swing by Breen. And they've got a little two out. Something started here. You'll see right here the ball is just driven right back up the middle. Maddie Moore tried to make a play, but she just uh, couldn't reach that one. It happens. Clean up hitter, Madeline Lopez. Uh, this just outside. Ball one, Kelly Green on first base does not have any stolen bases or attempts, attempts this season. As you see Lopez, the freshman from Texas. Way out in front of that one. Got a piece. 
it was it was really funny uh, yesterday. Game one was the was the closer of the two games, but the the Syracuse hitters looked a little bit overmatched against Cagle. They did. And then you send Millie Thompson out there, and she very very quietly let hitters go one for four, zero oh for four, you know, because she gives up the ground yes. balls. And uh, and so, but now McCubbin's a little bit in between Cagle and Thompson. And we've talked about it. They. Clemson's got another fine pitcher sitting down there in the bullpen and Rachel Spencer. What a luxury as you see she gets, dismisses her with strike three, but we'll talk about that more. Madeline uh, Lopez goes down. Brooke McCubbin's first strike. Clemson Tigers coached by John Rittman, of course. Clark, Moore, and Cagle do up in the first. Jacobson, Logaleo, Oda, Vieira, Miklesh, and Davenport round out. The very strong starting lineup for the Clemson Tigers and in the circle for Syracuse, Madison Knight. She did a good job yesterday. She surely did, but she's got to navigate this. 417, 345, 25, 364, 340. That is the first five batting averages in the Clemson lineup. Mackenzie Clark had the big triple and scored on throwing error to help break open the game in the bottom of the fourth inning yesterday. Swing it at the first pitch, fouls it away. Took a big swing there. Now, Clemson does have an advantage in the fact that they have seen Madison Knight already this weekend. Yes. The uh, little, Louisville, the Syracuse batters have not seen McCubbin. Clark shows bunt, pulls it back. Knight was really the, the most effective of the four orange pitchers yesterday when she came in in relief in game one. Starting pitcher giving up back-to-back -back homers and felt like the game was getting away from Syracuse. Knight settled everything back down and kept Syracuse right in it. She sure did. She gave her ch team a chance to get back in the game. Clark takes ball two inside. And that right there is a, an interesting shot. Uh, the Syracuse catcher. Alves is left-handed and which is unusual and when she has to reach across sometimes that will take a pitcher an inside pitch on a right-handed hitter away from a, a pitcher because it looks like she's having to move for a ball but she's not really having to move she just has to move her mitt a little bit differently than what umpires are accustomed to seeing interesting absolutely nothing wrong with a left-handed catcher we saw her make a great throw yesterday to nail a runner but when you pitch inside to a right-handed hitter, you got to remember now with the lefty behind the plate, she has to reach across to receive that ball. Clark pops one towards center. Hasso calls everyone off for out number one. Mark, we got a pretty good crowd in here today. I see a few empty seats. We did start at noon, so some people still may be at church or getting their day going. They may trickle in here, they may not, but it's a beautiful day for everybody that's here. It is. Maddie Moore got the scoring started in game one of the doubleheader yesterday with her solo home run we showed you in the pregame. Take strike one. The berm is uh, filled up rather nicely. Manny, the sophomore from California. I see the crowd in Kegel's corner has showed up again. The right field line here at McCorda Park. McCorda Stadium, excuse me. I don't want to get in trouble. Be careful. Yeah. Well, Rick just left the booth, so. <laughs> we can breathe again. Yeah. We can stop holding our breath now. He said he's coming back. So I know he be did. Careful. Cagle on deck. More hoping she can reach base before Valerie comes up. Good cut at that one, one and two. Moore had one of the most interesting at bats yesterday you'll ever see. We touched on it in uh, in our intro. She really disliked a strike call uh, in an at bat yesterday. She, I mean, really got under her skin, and then the very next pitch she uh, saw, she hit out of center field. One, two to Moore, high. I would imagine Coach Rippon wishes she'd get angry with more pitches. 
So Syracuse yesterday in both games, they wouldn't, they weren't letting any of their pitchers go through a lineup more than one time. Are you expecting to see the same thing today? See multiple arms? Yes, I would think that would be part of their strategy. Another fly ball. This one will be taken by Ramos for out number two. Yep. You think that's potentially what they see today? Obviously, don't want to speculate too far ahead, but that, I think that's they, what it seemed to be yesterday in the two games. The one thing that might interrupt that strategy is that McKnight was the most effective thrower they had yesterday yes. against Clemson. They may let her try to go as far as she can, then make the change, as you see out there in Cagle's corner. With the real orange. Well done, fellas. Cagle fouls the first one away. Yeah, we have got a bunch of orange in the ballpark. But anytime you uh, play up here, you're going to see a lot of orange. You see these statistics, which almost look made up in many ways. She's leading the country in total bases right now, 516 batting average. Yep. That slugging percentage does not seem human. Yep. That's video game type it stats is. there. This is just outside. They really pitched around Kegel yesterday with uh, with three walks she drew between her two hits. I think they got her out one time. You were just gesturing to me. Catcher having to reach across yeah. again might make things a little complicated for the umpire to give that call. That pitch was pretty close on what would be the outside corner for Kegel. That one was well outside. Yeah, they were very careful, as I was saying with her yesterday. Yeah, I don't think they're in too much of a mood to let her do anything. That don't mean that she won't. Right. I really like the Clemson White home uniforms. It's that one off the fists. An easy pop to the second baseman. Breen grabs it in a very quick one, two, three inning for Madison Knight. We're off to the second. Treating this just like any other game, and, and we've got a game plan, and we're going to come out and execute on it. Oh, yes. She's got a very, very impressive resume. She played her college ball at the University of Tennessee. So she's accustomed to winning. We just saw a fan make a nice catch on a foul ball. Right down in front of us. That's as close to us as a foul ball has gotten. Yeah. Depkin hoping to salvage one of these three games against the Tigers. It's... Yamila Evans looking at strike two. Already behind in the count. It would be huge for the Orange to win a game today. It would be. Evans shows bunt, pulls back. Oh, that didn't miss by much. One and two. We don't have the best of views, but that certainly sounded like a strike. <laughs> Play a little bit outside. Might have been a little low. Vieira tried to frame it back in. Evans again continues to show bunt. Gets, gets a piece of that one. Good cut. Anytime right now you see her squaring up like that, she's using that as a timing device more so than faking bunt. Yeah. Part of her routine, in other yeah. words. This is a timing device right here. Pops that one up. Let's see if it stays in play. Good job by Cagle to call everyone off for out number one. Yeah. Cagle does a really nice job out there at first base. She, John Rittman tells me if she had to, she could play shortstop. She is a very, very good defender. But now if I'm a, you know, an All-American pitcher and I'm out there playing first, I'm just going to tell the catcher and the, the other pitcher, I'm not going to run that far for a foul ball. <laughs> Somebody better get out there and get it. Madison Knight, the pitcher. And she is hanging on. This is a great at bat for her. Madison Knight is only a freshman, just a baby. She would love to help herself out. Boy, wouldn't she? Fouls that one away. That was kind of close to us, too, there, Scott. Yeah, it's getting monotonous. So would Coach Rittman let Valerie Cagle coach a game? 
coach again. Coach a game. Coach a game. We're if talking she about had, her playing whatever if, position If she, she asked wants to. to. The 0 2 pitch tonight in the dirt outside, one and two. The boss is back. We're in a problem. He's standing closer to you this time. Yeah, That's I know. All I'm and he brought others with him. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit, uh, getting a little claustrophobic in here for me, you know. I got you, Scott. Just stay laser focused on the game. Knight gets a piece over McCubbin's glove. Gonna have to rush the throw to first, and they do a great job, man. Maddie Moore had a long way to go and not a lot of time. She just made a very difficult play look easy. Maddie Moore has found herself a home at second base. She come in on that ball, and you watch, she runs past the angle of the throw. She, in other words, she runs inside of first base, and she comes back across her body and makes a throw like that. That right there is something everybody cannot do. That is a special play. Layla Alves up now for the orange. Yep. Fouls the first one away. Alves had some great at bats yesterday. I believe she had a walk and a hit. Yes, she did. Among her efforts. That's correct. I've got my security staff checking on who these people are <laughs> that's surrounding us right now. I think this may be the Bagby family, if I'm not mistaken. Certainly glad the daughter looks like the mom. There we go. So, hey, look at that. Said he snuck up on us. That's sabotage, I tell you. He comes in here, starts yelling, screaming, and he comes back with his family. Well, this is outside one and two. Why don't you tell people who Rick Bagby is for they don't know. We're just not picking on some ra random street person. Rick Bagby is uh, the man behind all of these incredible broadcasts that you watch really? on ESPN Plus at Clemson. Yes, he is. I thought he was a homeless person. <laughs> He's not? How, how can I answer that question with him standing here? Well, I don't know. I know this much. He married over his head. Yeah, punted his coverage by a mile. Well, speed pitch right in there. Brooke McCubbin has a really nice top of the second inning. Tiger that was Bats going to try to get going as you take a look at this strikeout one more time. Good crowd on hand, continuing to trickle in on a gorgeous Chamber of Commerce Sunday afternoon in Clemson, South Carolina. Tigers looking for the sweep of the Syracuse Orange. Clemson winning both ends of a doubleheader yesterday. There we go. I love the burn people. That's where you would be. If you weren't here, you you'd better be believe I would be. I'm glad you're here, man. That's, that's my uh, clientele out there. That's my demographic. Caroline Jacobson takes the first pitch outside, or inside, excuse me, 1-0. Oh. If uh, some of the viewers are thinking, wow, I see a couple of empty seats right there. Why can't they? Here's the reason. All of those seats are sold. Everything, this, the bowl of this stadium is sold out for the year. They do have some single game tickets available, and most of those are general admission out on the berm. But you can, you can find a few here and there. But you've got to get in early if you want to be a part of Clemson softball on the regular. Over 1,900 fans per game is what they've been averaging so far this season. One of the tops in the whole country. It's been a huge success, the uh, launch of this program here. Jacobson, a very, very handy addition to this Clemson lineup. We talked about it yesterday, but Bears mentioned it again. She is a graduate transfer who played at Duke University, is all in, all in the Duke record book whether she's come down to play her final season here at Clemson hammered towards center field long run out there for Hasso and a spectacular play boy I thought that was going all the way to the wall well now Hasso is is no slouch at all that is one of the top players that Syracuse has and you watch her she does a great job of running this ball down because as you said that had double written all over it Yes, she made that look easy. Coming off the bat, I thought that was either headed for the wall or maybe over her head, but she did a great job. Aliyah Logaleo steps in. She had four RBI in the second game yesterday on a couple of extra base hits. Looks at ball one. Yep. 
Wogaleo also had a spectacular diving catch in the field yesterday, the junior from Nashville. Yep. She's found herself a home as well out there at shortstop. Moore and Logaleo moved around a lot the last couple of years. Two and oh. Madison Knight did not give up any runs yesterday in her efforts in game one of the doubleheader. And you know what? She's got a nice mound presence out there. What I mean, she's business. Like when she's out there, she's open for business. Logaleo a little late. She's not scared, I can tell you that. And that's one of the biggest hurdles that a pitcher has to get past when they're breaking in their career is uh, feel like they belong. And uh, she certainly shows every sign of that. Only a freshman. Right in there, strike two. What a pitch. That was a nice pitch on the inside corner of the plate. Just inside. Got our first full count of the game for either team. Logaleo sporting it looks like gold face paint with some glitter today. That's what we decided to go with. Scott's got the same. You had the purple yesterday like she did and, yep. and you changed. You guys coordinated before the game. The off pitch swung on and missed so the first strikeout of the game for Madison Knight. She's been impressive so far. Done a great job so far. I mean, that's uh, five hitters up, five hitters down. She retired the first four on fly balls and then she gets a strikeout. The infield has not had to work a lick right now defensively so far. No. Except the second baseman caught a pop fly. Nothing on the ground yet for the Tiger. Ariel Oda, who had a big triple and two RBI in game one yesterday, late in that game to give Clemson a little insurance runs for Valerie Cagle to close things down in the game one win. She looks at ball one. Oda the junior from Buford. She had a big hit in yesterday's ball game, game one. It was her hit that provided Kegel a little bit of breathing room as she navigated through the uh, Syracuse lineup. There's a shot of Johnny Southpaw. Oda fouls one away, way out in front. I've got off speed. There he is, wearing his Custom made orange. Head coach of Clemson Tigers, John Rittman. I know we'll talk more about him later. I know I will. I'll throw in a word or two as well. Yeah. It's well deserved. Strike two. Yes, Madison Knight has had her command working so far. She is doing a very good job out there. over toward the dugout. Get the pitch call. Oda gets a piece. Knight takes a step over, grabs it, and throws to first. So six Tigers up and six Tigers down. We're off to the third inning. No score. Clyde Star, and then back to the top of the order with Hasso due up here in the third for the orange. And just as a, a uh, quirk in the schedule, next weekend Clemson is off in the conference, but they'll still be playing here at home. Be hosting a tournament next weekend. The Clemson Classic, I think it is. And hey, uh, they invited us back, Scott. Don't know if you'd heard, but we'll be back next weekend. Yeah, well, so far. Yes, yeah, I guess there is time this week for them to make some adjustments. Yeah, the viewers do not need to adjust their sets 
If you look to the left of the screen, you see a very bald-headed man with an orange shirt on sitting with his family. Right above the ACC, right above the yeah, ACC. Yeah, right, that is Mr. Rick Bagby. He came in here to laud us and praise us and give us all sorts of glorious <laughs> words, but he offered no extra money. So he went out and sat in the stands with his family. We love the kid, Mr. Bagby, but he's a good dude. Everybody in the room now just groaned. So roller to short, Logaleo over to Cagle for out number one. We talked about it yesterday. Clemson plays very, very good defense, and their infield is, is, is no different than the outfield as far as being good. You look, Logaleo just does that so well. She comes to the ball, stays through the ball, does not allow herself to become stationary, gets her shoulders in the right position to make good throws. Great job. So the number nine hitter, Ryan Starr. Popped one up. Should be an easy play for Matty Moore. Right over the bag at second base and a quick out number two. The one pitch outs, a pitcher's best friend. You better believe it. Strikeouts are overrated. Good play by Matty Moore. On the easy pop up. Back to the top of the order, Angel Hasso. With the slow roller to third, her first time up. Again, she had a couple of hits yesterday. You've seen her play well out in center field. She's a player for the Orange. She sure is. I'm very impressed with the way she Me plays. Too. Hasso wants to see if she can get something cooking here with two outs. Hit towards center field. Kenzie Clark. Yeah, she just glides, doesn't she, out there? She did. Made a difficult play look easy. Tigers coming up. Still no score. Headed to the bottom of the third. Great choice when they hired him to upload this Clemson softball program. The whole thing has been a huge success. Uh, the game experiences here are great. The uh, facility is magnificent, and winning is fun. Vieira, Miklesh, and Davenport do up here in the second inning. Abby Vieira, the sophomore from Mission Viejo, California. Behind the plate for the Tigers today as well. Notice how Vieira holds that bat almost completely vertical before she starts her swing. This one out toward left field. Ramos is there for out number one. Yep. So far, and of course, we're only in the bottom of the third inning, but uh, the Clemson lineup has not hit a ball hard yet. It's been seven up and seven down as the freshman Madison Knight in her second outing of the weekend. Well, I guess the even ball stronger that, than she did in the first. I'm sorry, I guess the uh, Jacobson the, did hit that line. Jacobson, drive. the one that uh, was caught out in center field, was hit pretty firm. Allie Miklesh. Swings through the first one. She had a couple of hits yesterday on bunts. I put one down in the infield. If she can lay the ball down in the infield, she's so quick to first base, almost impossible to throw her out. I'm surprised she's not trying to attack it now. You, we may see her try to attack it now. Clemson would love to get her on base. Yep, she was running through as if she was going to slap the ball. That's got to be tough when you're at third base and you're halfway down yeah. to the plate. Oh, Instead yeah. of a bunt, you see someone running up the slap. You better believe it. Mecklish transferred in here from Wisconsin. Swings through that one as well, strike two. Come right through that. Both pitchers kind of having their way today. So far, just the one hit. Yeah. From Kelly Breen, that single back in the first. All we've seen for either side so far. You know, when the bats go cold or the bats are not popping like you want them to, it really, really puts the onus on the pitcher yep. to hold that opponent right there till we can get something done for you.
2-2 from Knight. It's high, we got a full count. Mecklish knows her job is to get on base. I would, ex I would expect Knight to challenge her right here. I think this ball will be, will grab a good portion of the plate. Payoff pitch. Nicholas literally just slaps and gets a yep. piece of it so she can see another one. But, yep, got, uh, got Alvies on the leg there. She's taking her time getting back in there. Looks over to the dugout to get the signal. That's a big change for, in recent times. Uh, pitches being called from the dugout. They give everybody a, a wristband with the codes on it. Yep. And uh, Nicholas draws her walk, so she does her job. That's the first base runner for the Tigers. And she's going to bring up Reedy Davenport. The third baseman's a transfer from Florida Gulf Coast University down in Fort Myers, Florida. Beautiful, beautiful place down there. Nicholas does have five stolen bases on six attempts, so we'll be keeping an eye on the base pass. Tigers have been aggressive all weekend. We'll see if it continues here. Davenport takes strike one. Reedy Davenport known for her defensive prowess. She was a two-time defensive player of the year in the A-Sun Conference. But this year for the Tigers, she's also been a very, very positive addition offensively because she's hitting 385 right now. Boy, throw behind Miklas down at first base. She goes scrambling back. Now that is one advantage a left-handed catcher yes. has is make a snap throws to first base. Got back in just fine. See, she got back, yep. But again, you might make her think just that extra amount. Caused some delays on the base pass. With the count two and one now, I think this is a good time to look for her to run. Because you're thinking, okay, she's behind the count. So this pitch is probably going to be a strike or something close to a strike. That's going to give Davenport a chance to put the bat on the ball and we could avoid a possible double play if I'm running. Let's see if she goes. Nope, she was not going. So once again, for the like 15,000th time this season, I was wrong. No comment. None needed. So again, you see Miklash over there at first base. First base runner of the game so far for the Tigers. Davenport hits one to second. Toss to the shortstop, over on to first, double play. Fantastic defense for the Orange. And that'll be it for the Tigers in the bottom of the third. We'll take one more look at it as we head to break. Still scoreless in Clemson. I think it's Lee Corso who says, not so fast, my friends. We had a review of the double play. It looked like that Reedy Davenport might have beaten the throw to first base. And uh, spoiler alert, you just saw her standing on first. She was safe. Yep, she beat the throw. I, we thought we were going to see a, a review of that play, and we did. And uh, so the Tigers keep a runner at first base. But now there's two outs. But you've got Mackenzie Clark at the plate, and she's capable of doing just about anything. So again, we're still in the bottom of the third inning. We thought we had an inning ending double play with Davenport doubled up at first, but we did not. You saw her beat out the throw, so it's Davenport on first now, two outs, bottom of the third, and as Scott was just saying, back to the top of the order for the always dangerous Mackenzie Clark. Clark hits the first one high and deep towards center field. Hasso back to the wall, makes a spectacular catch up against the wall for out number three. What a play by Angel Hasso. Hasso just saved two runs. That ball was going to get out of here, I believe. Let's see. Yes, sir. That ball was going to be out of here. Nine. 
back into the top of the fourth and you'll be hard pressed to see a better defensive play anywhere than the one just made by Angel Hasso coming back against the wall. She was putting her hand back to see where she was at. Leaps up against the wall and makes a grab. Probably saved at least one run. And with Mackenzie Clark on the base pass, that one gets past you and hits off the wall. She may round all four bases. I think that ball was going to leave the ballpark. If there had been two mile an hour less wind, it would have been a no doubter. But as a result, Hasso was able to go out there and get the last out. Robbie Mackenzie Clark of possibly two RBI. So uh, Ramos, Breen, and Lopez up now here in the top of the fourth. And you see the flags you were just referencing it, Scott, blowing in. If they wouldn't have been blowing in quite that hard. That might have been a two-run homer for Mackenzie Clark. Ramos tries to lay a bunt down, does not get into fair territory, and she's behind 0-2. So a pitcher's duel so far, Brooke McCubbin, sophomore right-hander for the Tigers taking on Madison Knight, the freshman right-hander. And now it's through three. Yep, excuse me. Now both pitchers are seeing hitters for the second time and hitters are seeing pitchers for the second time. And McCubbin takes care of Ramos. Strikeout number three for her. Low ball with some movement. That one's tough. You can break this game down. You can be as scientific as you want to be. You can have all sorts of formulas. But let me tell you something. Good pitching makes good hitting look bad. And we've seen some good pitching out of the Clemson dugout all weekend long. And Madison Knight, in both of her appearances in this series, has provided the orange with some very good pitching. Kelly Breen has done something no one else has done this entire game. She actually has a hit, the only hit for either team so far. Mark, I was having a conversation years ago with the legendary Bobby Cox, former manager of the Atlanta Braves, and we were talking about pitching, and he said, let me tell you something. When you got all the pitching your team needs, go get some more. Yeah, can't ever have enough. And that's uh, that is so true. And you're seeing that now become true in softball. Used to be in softball, if you had two good pitchers, that's all you had. Yeah. You didn't even have relief pitchers. Mm -hmm. And uh, but now the game has evolved. The hitting has evolved. Uh, the athletes have evolved. And now you need a pitching staff. Now, it's not nearly as broad as a baseball pitching staff, but you need to be three or four deep. And Clemson is most definitely four deep. And we've seen Cagle and Thompson already. McCubbin doing great so far. You've got Spencer as well. We haven't seen yet this weekend. And Spencer would be a number one starter for about 90% of the teams in NCAA Division I. That's popped up. Out toward left field. McLesh settles under it for out number two. And I want to assure everyone that I am not exaggerating when I say that about Reagan Spencer. She is a top shelf pitcher. She leads the team in the ERA at 0 0.47. Works a lot of relief. I mean, she has uh, appeared in seven games, but she's only started two. So isn't it great if you're John Rittman to have that in your back pocket, knowing that you've got a starting quality person down there ready to relieve if necessary. Madeline Lopez seeing if she can get something going here in the fourth. Lines one to Valerie Cagle, who makes a spectacular defensive play of her own, and she is all smiles as she heads to the dugout. Brooke McCubbin still has not given up a run through four. Let's take one more look. Valerie Cagle spears it. And the Tigers are starting to break into that world. That's what you say, the, the usual suspects? Yes. I mean, powerful Oklahoma, powerful. UCLA, Oklahoma State, outstanding. And then right up there in their third year of existence, those little old Clemson Tigers. It's Maddie Moore, Valerie Cagle, Caroline Jacobson. Those are the three batters you want up if you're the Tigers and you're looking for some runs. More 0 for 1 today. I do want to point out, though, there's other people in the ACC that are newsworthy. Florida State has an outstanding program. Virginia Tech, a Fantastic programs. You see a soft line drive off of Maddie Moore's bat caught by the second baseman for the put out. 
Breen just kind of meandered toward the hole at second base and made that catch. Let's take another look at the defensive play that Valerie Cagle made, spearing what would have been definitely a single. I told y'all she could play. <laughs> she does a little bit of everything, doesn't she? Yeah, Scott's going way out on a limb here for sure. Tigers still hitless here in the fourth inning, and Syracuse yesterday in the two games, you would see a pitcher go through the lineup one time and then come out. Today we're seeing uh, Madison Knight staying in. She's going through this lineup for a second time, and obviously she's been essentially perfect so far except for that walk. Why would you take her out? Cagle, way out in front. Yeah, that was hit sharply, but well foul. There's Cagle's corner right down the right field line. They've got a broom out for the sweep of the series. They have a net. Got a hard hat out there today. They do. So look at that. Everybody look at one. You need the hard hat if the we ball comes some, your way. There's somebody out there working the Twitter machine. Cagle shows bunt. Pulled away in time. The, the infield plays so far back on Cagle. It's good to show that every once in a while, if nothing else, to keep him honest. Oh, yeah, because she runs well. And Clemson's trying to do anything right now to punch a hole in that zero under the hit column. They've hit a couple of balls sharp, but not much. Cagle hits one back up the middle, and that will be the first hit of the game for the Tigers. That's your basic base hit. And we're going to see a pinch runner come in for Cagle. She's too valuable a piece of property to have out there meandering around the base pass unless it's absolutely necessary. Bounces that one just over Knight's glove. Star making the diving effort from shortstop. It would not have mattered, I think, even if she would have made the play. No, even if you're correct, even if she smothers that ball, uh, nothing happens. Julia Baumhart. We saw her pitch run yesterday. Right Caroline, Jacobson. Caroline Jacobson steps in as you see Bob Hart over on first base. Second base runner of the game for the Tigers after the first hit. Jacobson wants to keep it going. Hammers the first one foul. Yeah. I don't think Coach Rittman even flinched over there, did he? No, he's a man of steel. He is. That's S-T-I-L-L. -L. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Hart comes to the Tigers from Daxborough, Delaware. Oh, you're getting that's right. You're on the uh, you're on the board from yes. Daxborough. We were talking about that yesterday. Jacobson pops the next one up, and a really nice play by the catcher Alves for out number two. Boy, a pitcher loves those. We've talked about that yes. before too. Those cheap outs, put outs made in foul territory. That is a good thing. You got to wonder now how many innings do we go before Clemson starts getting frustrated and starts maybe pressing a little bit with the bat. Logaleo, a four RBI game yesterday. I can assure you the longer this game goes as it is. Baumhart. Into second base safely, but not by much. That was a great throw by the second baseman. By the second baseman? By the catcher. We knew, the, it, we knew what the you shortstop. Meant. We were there with you. Everybody's taking time to go out here and talk about stuff. They're trying to probably stalling to see if anybody's going to get a look at what happened there. It was a very close play down there. Let's see what we got. Nope, she beat the rap. That was a good call. Well, hard. It looks like getting that the hand with the mid in there yep. just underneath the tag. Yep. She made a she made the correct call. So the Tigers have a runner in scoring position now with two outs. They've been totally dormant practically offensively today. And now with one poke, they can take a lead. Well, Galeo pops it up. Third baseman Clyde right over near the bag at third base. So Madison Knight has her fourth scoreless inning. We're headed to the fifth. Whose bats are going to wake up first? Hey. And now in the circle, right hander number 19, 
So you can close the books on Brooke McCubbin. She went four scoreless innings, and now we have the junior right-hander, Reagan Spencer. Yep, we talked about it earlier. This is a quality pitcher. She leads the team in ERA. Last year, she led the ACC in ERA. She comes in here uh, with a very stingy 0 0.47 ERA. And uh, she is outstanding. On most teams, she'd be a number one starter. So Evans, Knight, and Alves, that's five, six, and seven in the order for Syracuse. First one hit between short and third, so a leadoff single for Evans. And the orange. Trying to get something cooking here in the fifth. Yeah, that was a uh, well struck ball. It's kind of a rude greeting, isn't it? It is. The new pitcher. You're going to see a pinch runner coming here for Evans. Going to be number 44, Gabby Lantier. Lantia. So we've got a new first baseman in for the Tigers as well. Madison Mays at first. At the pinch runner now for Syracuse. Ball gets away from the catcher. And the runner will advance down to second base. So there's, an, there's a mistake that you don't want to see happen. The Tigers have, the Tigers have made two pitches in this inning, and, and the Syracuse club has a runner out there in scoring position with nobody out. As I said, I was wondering how deep this game would go before they start getting a little tight out there because, I mean, the underdog is hanging around. So Lantia comes in to pinch run, takes second on what I'm guessing they're going to call a pass ball. They do call that a pass ball, and it's now 2-0 and oh on the hitter, Madison Knight, who has a chance to help herself out in the circle. She surely does. Her job is to get that run to the third any way she can. A ground ball on the right side, anything. That one misses high 3-0, and oh, so. Well, you got to wonder now. Somebody needs to walk over there and have a talk with Reagan. We yep, we'll yep, see Reedy Davenport. Reedy Davenport going over there doing that. And if you're Knight right here, I would guess you're taken, but I may be wrong about that. She was. Do you think about a sacrifice over to third here, or are you swinging away? Well, I would not take that out of the realm of possibility. I mean, it's been very difficult for the Orange to score against the Tigers, and I'd get that run over to third base any way I could. Now it's first and second, so Reagan Spencer has pitched herself into some trouble here in the top of the fifth. Yep, things have gotten very ugly now. I think you may see a bunt in this situation now, most definitely. I think it would be a possibility. I don't know that uh, Alves butts a lot or not, but I would think she's going to be asked to do that now. And we're going to see another pitch runner come in for the Orange. That's going to be number eight, Kate Durazio. So we got a couple of pinch runners out there at first and second base. So it's Lantia who pinch ran for Evans at second, and Durazio who pinch ran for Madison Knight at first, and Layla Alves. Bunts. Quick throw over to third to get the lead runner. Very well played defensively. That is a great play made by a veteran defender at third base. Reedy Davenport knew exactly how quickly that ball got to her, and she knew she had time. Logaleo doing her thing. They get the force at third and keep the orange with the, with the uh, force play intact. And right now you see the pitching coach for the Tigers out there having a chat with Reagan Spencer. And I'm sure that Kyle Jamerson is just checking on to be sure everything's all right. The Orange are still a base it away from maybe getting them a run in this game. Spencer now has the good fortune 
of having an out to work with, and we see that uh, Millie Thompson was getting some work in down in the bullpen. She could be either just working or she may be warming up now. So Rebecca Clyde steps in, takes strike one. You know, sometimes it takes an out just to settle a pitcher down. We'll just have to see what, what happens here. But uh, you can almost feel a little bit of momentum creeping into that third base dugout over there for this situation. Clipson's accustomed to taking their opponents and by the by the fifth inning being rather comfortable with the lead, whether it be two runs, three runs, four runs. But here they set zero to zero and they've only had one hit on the day. And that pitch just misses two and one. Spencer thought she had strike two there. Well, Clipson's had a lot of things happen in this inning and the pitcher cannot allow the umpire's calls to even get near her head. And now at three and one, this is a very, very, very much crippled pitch that's going to be coming in there. What I mean by a crippled pitch, this ball has to be around the plate. The hitter does not have to guess for about that. So it feels like a big moment in this game. The three one pitch, she swings through it, strike two. Uh, being I aggressive. Th I throw that one again. <laughs> Well, that was a great pitch. He just kind of threw the ball by the hitter there. Clyde had no chance. So Durazio on second, Alves on first, Clyde at the plate, payoff pitch. Right in there, strike three. What a pitch. She painted that outside corner. And if you're Clyde, you cannot take that pitch. That was a big, big moment in this game to take a pitch. Looks like we're going to see a pinch hitter come up for the orange here number 26 that's Ponzier Posner it looks like Taylor Posner Let's see what we got on her mm, she looks at ball one Posner, the sophomore from Downington, Pennsylvania. Only hitting 217. But now, after all that trouble, Reagan Spencer's got two outs, and she's an out of way of getting out of a mess. Posner swings. Over at third base, Davenport, another great defensive play. Grabs it, steps on the bag, and Reagan Spencer wiggles off the hook. Tigers coming up, looking for some runs. And some great defensive efforts from Reedy Davenport. Got the Tigers out with no damage in the top of the fifth. It's Oda, Vieira, and Miklash due up for Clemson here in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, momentum was clearly yes. living over there in the third base dugout, and then all of a sudden it decided to walk right back to the first base side. And as you were alluding to on the break, when you're an underdog, you only get one or two times in yes. a game to damage your opponent. And that was Clips, I mean, uh, Syracuse's chance right there. So they may get another one. Yes. What is it if you're going to take a shot at the king or the queen? You yep. best not miss. Yep. You had a shot right there. We'll see if they can continue to uh, find a way to get another one. And if Madison Knight keeps pitching this way, they very well might. Oda in there in the box. I can't help but think about the triple she hit yesterday. In game one, it kind of gave a lot of breathing room to the Tiger pitching. And that was Miss Kegel. Close ball game until then. Two to one game. But it takes ball two inside. We saw some weird plays in game one. Yes, we saw the ball slip out of the catcher's hand and end up That's right. in right center field. That's right. You know, we just saw a lot of stuff. Saw collision at first base yesterday. Yep. We had somebody trying to call timeout and hit a home run. Oda hits one out towards short. Long throw. Sails over everybody. Oda takes a big turn. She's going to try to take second base, and she does. A great aggressive base running choice by Ariel Oda, and she's on second base with nobody out. Feel like they're going to call that a single and an error. I don't know. Could you have gotten Oda? Let's see. It would have been close. We'll see how they score it. 
And just as we talked about momentum in the thir third base dugout during the first half of this inning, now momentum is completely on the right field side and standing out there on second base. Oda, I'm sure, was given a hit and advanced a second on the on the bad throw. Yep. It does go as a hit and error. So the single, just the second one of the game for the Tigers and the error, Abby Vieira. Wow. Say error and Abby Vieira. Yeah. Back to back and mess it up like I just did. Vieira's at the plate now with a lot of choices to be made. Do you try to sacrifice the runner to third? You could think about it, but what, what Vieira really wants to do is put the ball in play on the right side. That will get Oda over to third base. If she's not bunting, she's trying to pull the pitch. Yeah, Oda does have three stolen bases on three attempts. You just saw her and how she hustled a second. You know how quick she is. Well, with her speed, you don't necessarily have to steal third base because you think any kind of single uh, is going to get, get you home. A long fly ball to right is going to get you to third. And a base hit will definitely score you. It towards short. Looks the runner back, throw to first, barely get Vieira for out number one. And that was the least place you wanted to hit that ball yes. on the ground in the infield. It was easy for them to check the runner. Oda did a great job. And the shortstop did a very, very good job. That's Ryan Starr out there. Now, I fully expect this ball to be bunted, even with one out. Allie McLesh shows bunt, puts a nice one down, throw over to first, and she is safe. Runners on the corners, one out. She's so fast. That is a very nice job of execution there. The pitcher did all night, did all she could, but Nicholas just outruns the ball. And that's three times, I think, this weekend that we've seen her. Yep. Literally, if she can just get the ball into fair territory, she's getting down to first base. She's I mean, so fast out of the box. Madison Knight did a really good job of fielding her position out there. Now, if you're Clemson, you've got all sorts yep. of possibilities now. you got runners on first and third, maybe the fastest base runner on your team at first base. You could very easily steal second. Yes. Uh, you could do just so many things. You could you could even think about squeezing right here. If it's, if it's what you want to do, you're way down in the bat in order. Uh, Davenport coming up now. Davenport handles the bat very well. He does. Although most people wouldn't notice it or know it, but she's made the defensive play of the game by fielding her position and making that force out at third base on the bunt attempt. And so... There's a lot of big things happening out there right now. And this is a, a game of cat and mouse right now, a little game of chess going on here. Will, will she squeeze? Will she put the ball in play? Will she take a pitch to let Nicholas have a chance to steal second? Mark, this is just about more than I can handle. It is. Lots of strategery going on right now. So you've got Oda at third. McLash at first. Davenport at the plate, shows bunts. That was the squeeze play. It was. On oh, Davenport's frustrated. She knows if she got that down, it was one nothing. She also knew she had a good pitch to bunt. Because the last thing you want to do is see a bunt, a bunt go up. I tell you, you can call John Rittman a lot of things, but not aggressive is not one of them. He's always putting pressure on the other team. I have called him a lot of things. I'll let you two sort that out. Yeah, we do. <laughs> He's pretty good at it, too, by the way. Oh, they doubled up on the squeeze. And that was going to be all kinds of chaos oh, if that yeah. ball would have stopped right in front of home plate. Yeah. With Oda barreling in, all the infield crashing, but it's now 0-2. So well, the one thing with the defensive alignment they were doing, if Oda could get herself stopped, she could have gotten back to third because nobody was coming behind her to check it up. And she would have outran anybody back to third base. Yeah. But now Reedy is buried in the count, 0-2. And 
if you're night, you got all sorts of pitches you can make right here. Outside, and they are going to let McClash steal second base. So now two runners in scoring position. Yep. So you can say this has been a productive at bat. They did get the, the runner down to second base here, which will make things better for the on deck hitter. And that's a very dangerous McKenzie Clark. But Davenport wants to do some damage of her own right here. Takes one inside, two and two. Showing good veteran patience in the box. Buried herself early with the two bunt attempts. But now she's come back to make it two and two. She, she may get a halfway decent pitch to hit here. The grad transfer, Reedy Davenport. It's one foul. Yep. Down to the Syracuse bullpen. I think a few more people have trickled in here. I think they must have, as we say down south, they had to go to preach it before they came here. There you go. Lots of folks out in the out on the berm in the general admission seats, hoping the Tigers can find a way to get on top. Davenport takes ball three. What an at bat for Reedy Davenport. Yeah. After fouling off two bunts, Showing not being able to get the to squeeze down. Yeah. Now full count. And you've got Mackenzie Clark looming on deck. There is no doubt, and this is probably one of the greatest understatements. Paul, this is the biggest pitch in the ball game right now for Madison Knight. Davenport hits one to second. The run will score, so she did her job. You see her looking at her dugout. Yeah. Smacking she her hands it. together. That is exactly what you expect a veteran to do. That is a unselfish veteran. You see her, she reached to poke that ball out there towards second base. She got it done, and she was happy with herself even before reaching the base. That was great to see. Now, and also, Micklish is now over at third base with McKen Mackenzie Clark up, so the infield has to be on your toes because Clark can bunt it. And of course, she can hit the ball in the gap, she can hit the ball out of the park. Clark hits the first one, a little pop to second base, an easy play for Breen. But Reedy Davenport. So the Tigers find a way to take the one nothing lead going to the sixth, and it's Valerie Cagle time back in the circle, Scott. This is not a big surprise that Cagle's out there. We noticed that she'd come out of the defensive lineup, and uh, we suspected that she was out there to out of the lineup to go down there and get her arm ready. And I thought it would not be until the seventh, but Coach Ripman has decided he's not going to mess around with this, and he's going to go get them. We've had a major situation develop in the press box. My soda pop spewed. Luckily, there was no injuries. We've had an eventful day in the press box so far. Oh, we've had a lot of stuff. Going Multiple on. visits from the boss man. Oh, it's just too much stress. You having trouble with your soda and uh, a really good ball game to boot. Tigers on top, one nothing. Kaya Keller is now at first base. Well, don't let this uh, one nothing conference game get in the way of talking about the soda spilling. <laughs> it's back to the top of the order for the Orange. It's Hasso, Ramos, and Breen do up. I demand an investigation to know if that was indeed an accident or was I set up. <laughs> Swung on and missed, strike three. So Valerie Cagle comes in, one batter, one strikeout. That was very Cagle-ish right there, wasn't it? It Just was. Motor down. You see Shannon Depking looking on. Her team's played really well this weekend. They were right in game one until the bottom of the sixth inning where the Tigers added a couple of runs and they're right in this one. She a chance is to a, try and take down one of the top five teams in the country. Coach Duncan is a very fine young coach. She's gonna do very well. She's done well everywhere she's been. Yes. Ramos is in, swung on and missed, strike two. And Cagle is not messing around right now, just going right after these batters. Yeah, this is a, uh, as we've talked about so many times, she's just different. This is outside. Cagle does have one save already on the season. McCubbin has one as well. 
Yep. The Clemson team ERA coming into this game was 0 0.78, and obviously has improved on that so far. They, uh, they're well documented, they're a good staff. I mean, it's just very well documented. And they go about proving practically every game. This is outside, two and two. Tigers trying to sweep the orange. They won a doubleheader yesterday. Trying to start off 3-0 and in the ACC and pick up their 20th win in 21 games this season. Ball hits slowly toward third. Throw over to first for the out. Another nice play by Davenport. And I don't know if we, we noted, but uh, perhaps you did. Kai Keller is yes. playing first base. Uh, when they re-entered Kaglin to the lineup, that had to be the end of the day for the first baseman that had come in to uh, play for Kegel, Madison May. Kelly Breen steps in with two outs. She has one of the two hits for the Orange so far today. One thing that John Ripman does and his teams do is he uses his he uses his roster. I mean, he don't he is not afraid to plug somebody and pull somebody out. And what a luxury it is to have something like number 72 on the mound. See Breen's nice numbers on the season. Fouls that one away, and Cagle is one strike away from getting through the top of the sixth inning with this lead intact for Clemson. Oh Off speed, hit foul. Yep. Well, Breen was waiting on that one. He sure was. He got a good piece of that one for a one-two count pitch. Partner, we saw an oddity. We saw a one run inning out of the Clemson offense. That's true. It's usually the crooked numbers. We talked about it. It's been crooked numbers all weekend. Twos or threes every inning that the Tigers have scored in. I think a couple of Tigers thought they had hit or struck out there. But uh, the counts evened up at two and two. I think Cagle's coming full gas right here. This is a little low, three and two. And it was low. Madeline Lopez, the cleanup hitter, is on deck. Mallory Cagle would rather see her in the top of the seventh. Yeah, there's no advice that you give a pitcher like Cagle. You just let her go out there and do her thing. But if I had anything to talk to her about, is I would constantly remind her that her that her good, her best, is enough. She doesn't need to help it. She don't need to try right. to help the pitch. Don't overthrow. Don't overthrow. And uh, she just needs to relax because with her velocity and her her uh, location, I mean the odds are all in her favor. I mean, sure that the hitter could run into one, but the odds are in your favor. Kegel to Breen. Breen stays alive. What a great good bat. job. Yeah, she's doing a really good job of making them work for it. Look at that photographer we got out there in center field. What a great job. Yeah. He's got it dialed in. Yeah. Wants to see a Valerie yeah, Kegel strike out there. giving us a wave. You think the Tiger waves at us? Of course not. Shot towards third, Davenport, another nice defensive play. Valerie Cagle comes in, gets a one, two, three in the top of the sixth. A little insurance would be nice for the Tigers. They're coming up. It's the Clemson Classic next weekend. UNC Greensboro, Jacksonville, Bryant, Charlotte. So four games over three days for the Tigers next weekend. And there's one, there's one additional game in there too, I think, because I think there's a winner's game on Sunday of that tournament. Well, there's actually one more game in there. And I will. So bottom of the six now for the Tigers. We talked about next week, Clemson's off within the, within the conference. 
but starting the following weekend, they've got two weekends of road trips in the conference. It's Matty Moore, Cagle, and Jacobson here. That's who you want up when you're trying to add some insurance runs in the sixth. And Madison Knight's still in the circle. She's been tremendous for Syracuse today. I've been very impressed with the freshman. She'd love to keep this game right here at one nothing. She surely would. And I stand corrected. Clemson is at home the next two weekends. They got Virginia coming here before they go on the road. Let's head out towards short. Scooped up by Starr. Over to first for out number one. I'll tell you what, Knight has had herself a very good day. She has. I mean, a very good day. I, I said earlier in the game, she she's out there looking like she belongs. And I haven't changed my mind at all about that. A confidence builder for a freshman, for sure. Syracuse had a missed opportunity, and Clemson took advantage of their one scoring opportunity. And that's, that's all it's been in this game. The rest of it's been all pitching. Cagle trying to help her own cause, and she's in the circle now. Looks at strike one. Cagle today, a pop up the second, and a single. Single, yes. And I was just thinking after I saw the replay of that pitch, you don't want to do that again. You throw her that pitch again, it will be 2 nothing. One and one. That was not a strike, but that was a very good pitch that time by night. You don't want to give Kegel something that she can turn on or get a lot of the bat on. As we see, Kegel's corner again, complete with the fishing net, the hard hat. I think there's a lacrosse <laughs> basket out there or stick, whatever they call them things. Outside two and one. Again, Kegel had three walks in the two games yesterday. They really were careful with her. I would assume Madison Knight's going to be doing the same thing here. Yeah, you would, you would think. Well, it came right after her there, strike two. Very nice pitch. 2-2 two -two count. One on a miss, strike three, and Madison Knight celebrating in the circle as she should. Absolutely. Gets the strikeout of Valerie Cagle. That's a personal victory for that young woman. She's telling herself right now, I just struck out one of the best hitters in the country. And again, th I really believe this. I mean, this has been a great outing for Knight. I mean, she has to win or lose, she has to leave here feeling very confident. Absolutely. I mean, if, if I can do this with this Clemson lineup, I mean, I'm not going to be scared of anything else I see all year. But now she's still got to get Jacobson and get back in the dugout. And you see Jacobson just yank that one foul. So two outs now at the bottom of the sixth. You see the score. Tigers up one nothing, trying to complete the sweep of the orange. I think the crowd would want to hang around after the game is such a pretty day. But they'll probably go find something else to do. Jacobson hits one hard out into left center field. Hasso's got a long way to go. Jacobson a big turn and well played defensively in center for Hasso to hold Jacobson to a single. Yeah, she, she took a big turn, but she put the brakes on. Good job by the center fielder. We talked about her. We talked about Hasso all weekend. She did a good job getting over there and cutting that off. And there you see now Johnny Ballgame going to put in a fresh pair of legs to run. That's going to be number five, Ainsley Houston. This is a job she's done many times for the Tigers pinch run. And yes, she is a threat to steal. And I would be highly, highly surprised that at some point in this at bat, she doesn't go. It may be first pitch go. We see Aaliyah Logaleo. She had such a big second game yesterday with the two hits and the four RBI. That's a great name right there, isn't it? It is. Just fun to say. Mm.
So Houston at first, going on the first, but no, she's not going. She took a big jump. I thought she was off. She just getting it measured. Count one and oh now. This may be the time. She's not going to hang around at first base very long. That one's right in there, strike one. I just really, really have been impressed with Madison Knight. I know we've beat that horse to death. But when you're seeing so much good pitching, that's what you talk about. Logaleo hits one high down the line, going into foul territory. Over had, the corner of the wall. It had the distance. It was just about 15 feet foul. Somebody ran down there and grabbed that ball in a hurry. So one and two to count now. I can't believe that she's not ran yet. See the wind blowing in, not helping the hitters at all. You can hit one out of here today. You're going to have to really get a hold of it. Well, Vallejo tips one into the glove for strike three. So Madison Knight did a spectacular job. So Syracuse, uh, they got a nice little trip next weekend. The Lance Up Tournament. Hosted by California Baptist, they've got UC San Diego and Harvard as well. Yep, a long way to go to play some softball, but it should be good weather out there. Yeah, well, when you're from upstate New York, it, it takes a while before you play at home. So Lopez, Evans, and Knights are the three orange due up against Valerie Cagle, who is three outs away from helping Clemson secure a sweep in this opening series in ACC play. One and one to Lopez. Kegel's job is very, very simple. Mow them down. And you know what? After all is said and done, I think Reagan Spencer stands a chance to win this game. Because she pitched the half inning before the run was scored. Kegel came in in the, in the uh, top part of the sixth. She did. And the run was scored in the fifth. Ergo. And a hit off the end of the bat. Logaleo fires to first. Keller grabs it out number one. Nice job right there getting the hitter to beat the ball into the ground. It's three straight grounders to short for Valerie Cagle. She'll take them, especially when you've got a great defensive yep. shortstop like Logaleo. Logaleo did a great job. She does a lot of things right out there defensively. So does the entire infield, for that matter, of the Clemson Tigers. I mean, Maddie Moore, we've already talked about a second. And, and I mean, Reedy Davenport is just clutch with the glove. I mean, that's what she does. Yamila Evans fouls the first one away. Evans does have one of the two hits for Syracuse. Yep. Well, I mean, hits have been a rare commodity. There's only six total for the game. The Orange have two, the Tigers have four. Been a couple of walks sprinkled in there, but not too many. It's been a very fast paced game thus far. When you're a team like Clemson, they're used to this in football. You get everybody's best shot, right? I yeah. Mean, they've got you circled on the calendar. Syracuse has played really well this weekend and still have a chance to win here in game three. They have gone toe to toe with these Tigers. Make no mistake about it. I know that. The orange are picked to finish at bottom part of the ACC. But people had better be aware when they come to town because they're playing pretty hard in those ball. And as, lo and as long as they've got an out, they've got a chance. Count now three and one. You don't want to put a runner on base. You don't want to put the tying run on base here in the seventh. No, you do not. Tigers thought she might have gone around and appealed the play to first base, but they said that Evans held her back, back, bat back. Hit one pass, Logaleo at short. So Evans has her second hit of the day. The tying run is now on first base. And the go-ahead run comes to the plate. 
And what happens is when a pitcher finds himself in a 3-1 count, the hitter knows the ball's going to be in the zone. And she did a good job of just sitting there, seeing it and hitting it. And hit it firmly back up the middle to get on base. And that is a, uh, a, a beautiful thing to see if you're the Syracuse coaching staff. First pitch tonight. Third. Gets the lead runner at second. Fires to first. Keller comes off the bag. So it's not a double play. Everybody's looking, wanting to know if they're going to take a look at it, see if she held the bag or not. So it looked like a game ending double play. Referees are talking about it. Let's see it again. Second over to first. We're seeing her foot came off the bag. It was tough to see Cagle. They are going to they are going to review her foot's on the bag right there, Scott. Okay, but watch right here. I can't see the oh. The toe is going to be what it's all about. Looks like her heel is on the bag, but it's tough to tell. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be close. Boy, don't you know that Syracuse is going to be disappointed if the game ends on a on an overturned call. So the and Tigers are hoping the call is yeah. overturned. It may be overturned. We, we don't have a clear, clear view of the bases and the feet and all that kind of stuff. But uh, we'll take another look. It looks like her heels on the bag, but it's tough to tell ball in the glove now. Boy, well, Scott, it looks I mean, the umpire's got the perfect view. You can see that it looking looks right out. down at the foot. I mean, to me, that looks out. It does. What do you say? It looked like her heel was still on the bag when she caught the ball. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so close. Gonna have to see. Is, that the, is, the heel up, is the heel up right there? Uh, it looks like it might be. Uh, uh, boy, that's close. It is. You may not be able to overturn that one now in retrospect. That particularly with that view right there. Here's a better view. Maybe this may be the best one. There's a catch. And that toe looks like it's on the bag there now. The heel may be up. It looks like the toe is on the against the bag. It does. So I think that, that man. Now, now I have predicted it's going to be overturned, and I've also predicted that it's going to be uh, it's going to stand. <laughs> you're covering all the you're, you're so, covering all the bases yeah. here, Scott. So the when only they come thing back I'm, out, you're like, of course. The I told only you guys. thing I'm leaving open is if somebody says we're going to do a do-over. Yeah, there we go. And if we see do that, then everybody's going to be all upset, and the whole afternoon's going to be shot. So Keller was going for the big stretch, right, to get more time. She didn't yeah. have to stretch. No, she didn't. I mean, they turned it so quickly. Yeah. She stretched too early. Yes. So it's either ball game over. If you feel like her foot is on the bag right here, then Clemson is a one nothing winner. If you feel like her foot is not on the bag right here, then uh, Layla Albase will be coming to the plate. But can you overturn it? No, the call no, no. was safe. Yeah. Call was safe. I truly can't tell. No. Which yeah. would mean if you do not have clear evidence, and there, then you're not going to be able right to overturn it. Both that shot right there gives us a chance to thank all of the camera people, all the technical folks that make these shows go. Great shots by our crew, by the way. Yep. Good job on the replay. Yep. Down the third base side there. Look at the fans. They're all there. They're getting a drink of water. Here come the umpires. They're either going to say safe or out. Let's see what the call is. Out at first base and the Clemson Tigers have won game three of the series by a final score of one nothing. You see Valerie Cagle all smiles, the Tigers all smiles. The call has changed, double play stands. Clemson is your winner. What a great weekend for the Tigers, Scott. They did exactly what they needed to do. When you're one of the top ranked teams in the country, you got to take care of games at home. They came in here, a very game Syracuse program, but they, Clemson Tigers came in here and they won three games. They set three and zero in the conference right now. They're exactly where they want to be. If I am Syracuse, I leave here with confidence, saying, hey, I can play with anybody, because we did we did this weekend. We played nose to nose with Clemson. They did. Tigers take game one, four to one yesterday. Game two yesterday was eight to nothing. And then uh, Syracuse gave them all they could. But the Tigers scratched a run across late in this game. 
to win the third game of the series and secure the sweep one to nothing. Tigers will host Mercer on Wednesday night right here at six o'clock and then they host the Clemson Classic next weekend. The Tigers are three and zero in the ACC. They'll be celebrating for the rest of their weekend. For the cast and crew here in Clemson, it's Scott Whitlock.